الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم On behalf of ICWS uh, I would like to uh, welcome you for another uh, of our Friday uh, sessions uh, during Ramadan الحمد لله Today um, I want to pick a story from the Quran and the the stories from the Quran are select you know there's there's select human experiences that Allah has put in the Quran to um, you know he quoted them uh, to uh, teach us a lesson because I mean sometimes lessons are taught directly sometimes lessons are taught indirectly and the stories uh, of historical events in the Quran are not that they're not historical events per se because the Quran is not a history book it's a book of guidance so Allah Taala wants us to learn from from these exp- human experiences and um, you know and each story fixes an aspect of the human psyche uh, until if you apply all of the the lessons from all the stories it creates the perfect human being and that's what Quran strives uh, to achieve now one such story in the Quran was about a nation that was beaten demoralized and humiliated and they wanted their you know they wanted their dignity back and it's the the story of Talut and Jalut in English it's uh, Saul and Goliath as narrated in Surah Al-Baqarah in verses 246 to 251 that's chapter 2 <coughs> So the story lays out the traits of success and what it will take for Allah to establish a person or a group to be a Khalifa on this earth, to be responsible for this earth. So all the success, the success factors are mentioned in the surah. So the background, the background to the surah, um, you know, this this story is commonly uh, in in the Old Testament, and you know it's known in uh, David and Goliath. But in the in the Quran, it's Talut, it's uh, Saul and and Goliath. So the background of the story is uh, Sayyidina Musa took the children of Israel out of Egypt, and Allah told them, "You need to enter into the Holy Land," and they refused. You know, they just saw Allah's miracles and they refused. They did not want to go there because they were powerful people in there. They did not want to fight. They were coward and selfish. So they did not possess the um, the traits of success. <clears throat> so at that time, Sayyidina Musa and, and Sayyidina Harun only had themselves. And two people, no matter how good they are, I mean, they're great prophets. Two people cannot make a change. You need a critical mass in order to, to make a change in, in human history. So Allah made them wander in the desert for 40 years until a new generation. Uh, the old generation died, a new generation was born, and they were ready. And at the time, uh, Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun, they both died. And uh, uh, Musa's student, uh, Yusha bin Nun, uh, Joshua in English, he took the leadership and he was their prophet and took them um, to battle and they won and they entered Jerusalem and conquered it. Now after Joshua died, the children of Israel kind of reverted back to the to their old habits and Allah Taala sent on them uh, the Amalekites. Uh, they were giants and very powerful people that went in, you know, killed the men, took the women and children as, as slaves, took their possessions and took one of their most sacred artifact, the tomb. Now the tomb was, was a great symbol uh, for, for the Jews. It was a box that had, you know, some say had the staff of uh, Sayyidina Musa. It, uh, it had maybe the original tablets that Allah gave uh, to Moses, alayhi salam. Or it, but Allah, the, the verses describe it as it has remnants of what uh, Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun have left behind. Uh, but anyways, it was a very important uh, artifact for them. They used to take it to battle, put it you know, in the front line, and it gave them a lot of confidence and you know, uh, to, 
to win, you know, to go into battle and, and win the battle. But now that that tomb was taken away from them, they were humiliated and demoralized, and you know, they they lost their confidence. So they were they lost everything, and they were at a very low point uh, in 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 their uh, in their history. Um, so they started weaving legends about how strong Goliath was and, you know, how formidable they were. Because that, that's what, what people who don't want to fight, cowards, they make the other side look so formidable so to justify, you know, for, you know to escape from responsibility and to justify their loss. So that generation went away and another generation came. And this generation was ready to, to fight and reclaim what was, what was theirs. What was taken from them, and that's where the the story in in Surah Al-Baqarah begins in um, chapter two, verse two forty six. Allah says, "Alam tara ila al-mala' min bani Israel min baad Musa, id qalu li Nabi lhum ibgat lana malik nuqatil fi sabil Allah." Al-mala' it says, "Have you seen to the leadership?" Al-mala' is like the the leadership of the tribes. So the, this is like the upper class. The the politicians, the, you know, whatever you want to call them, they were the people, you know, in charge. It says, have you seen to the, to the Mela of Beni Israel after Moses, when they said to one of their, to their prophet, send us a king so we can fight in Allah's way. Now, they quarreled with each other. I mean, they were all leaders of their own, own tribes, but nobody wanted to, wanted that leadership position. So they, you know, because they knew whoever was going to lead that battle probably is going to get killed because uh, Goliath and, and his people were just giants and formidable. Uh, so, you know, they, they were cowards. They did not want the leadership. They want somebody else to take the leadership. And, you know, the statement, Ibathlana Melikan, you know, send us, you know, the statement that they made to their prophet, send us a king. Like they had nothing to do with, you know, with this. And, you know, they wanted... They wanted no responsibility. They were waiting for the Mahdi. They were waiting for somebody else to come and save them. Now, it does not work that way. You know, you have to go in. You have to, to you know, band together, get a leader, and get what was taken from you. So their prophet and uh, the, the, who that prophet is is not mentioned in the Quran, but uh, the, the Old Testament mentions it was Samuel, uh, Prophet Samuel. So his prophet knew their mentality well. They, he knew he, they were not serious. So he questioned their commitment. And the verses narrate how they took offense to that. And like, how, you know, how can you say that when, you know, we've been beaten and we've been, everything was taken from us and we're ready. And, you know, they, they took offense to that and they gave their reasons. That they have nothing to lose and, and you know, they're ready to, re to restore their dignity. They had such enthusiasm. So whenever you have enthusiasm, enthusiasm like that, Allah will test you. Are you serious? How serious are you? And do you have the traits that it takes to be successful? Now, Allah put them through four tests. Fine. You want to go and you want to reclaim the Holy Land and you want to conquer your enemies. Allah put them through four tests to, you know, to, to uh, see how serious they, they are. And with each test, a group was filtered out. It's, it's like going through a sieve. You know, you go from, from the, the coarse to the fine to the fine until you get the very fine stuff out. So the first test, fighting was ordered. Now, when that, when that order came that, yes, Allah is ordering you to go to battle and fight. Now, the cowards were filtered out. It's like, no, 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 no. Let somebody else send their kids to go die, to fight and die. We are, you know, we, we don't want any part of that. And the verse says, فَلَمَّا كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقِتَالُ تَوَلَّوْا إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِّنْهُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ When fighting was prescribed on them, they turned away except for a few of them. And Allah is knowing of the wrongdoers. Now some, some uh, um, you know, some of the uh, Old Testament put their number at 800,000. The number is not important. Um, but a few, إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْهُمْ Except a few, a few at best is 10%. So 
So let's say they were 800,000, you know, the, the group. So they went from 800,000 to 80,000. 80,000 says, okay, we're going to go to battle and we accept, you know, we accept uh, Allah's challenge that we're going to go, we're going to go to battle. So, and the rest of them, you know, they turned away. The 90% turned away because they wanted somebody else to fight. They did not want to, to bother themselves or to sacrifice anything. So the first test filtered out the negative personalities, you know, the cowards. Because being a coward, you'll never achieve victory and Allah will never support you. So the second test came and fighting for leadership. Because usually that's the, that's the next thing that happens. So, so this test filtered out the selfish people. So Allah, um, on you know, their, their, uh, their prophet in verse 247, And their prophet told them that Allah has sent to them a king called Saul. And Saul, Talut, was one of the commoners. He was one of the, the regular people. And, and they, they objected. They said, I know, قالوا, يكون له الملك علينا ونحن حق بالملك منه ولم يؤت ساعة من المال. How can he be given leadership and we are the top class, we are the ruling class, we are the rich people. You know, he doesn't have money, he doesn't have, you know, power, he doesn't have clout. How can he be a king, appointed a king? as if that had anything to do with you know with with leadership is how much money do you have and how much wealth so you know the leaders squabbled you know they squabbled and they would not accept a poor common folks you know to be to be their leader but it was a divine order from allah you want to go to battle here is the appropriate person that will lead you to battle and the the verse the following verse uh, the, the prophet tells them that Allah has has is qala inna Allah astafahu alaykum wa zadahu bastatan fil ilmi wal jism he said indeed Allah has chosen him over you and increased him abundantly in knowledge and stature when you want to go to battle you want a wise people wise person that has the knowledge and a strong person that that has the power so Allah has given him abundance in those two critical factors that you will need to lead and you know they did not they did not have that moreover allah told them i'm going to give you a miracle so their prophet says the sign from allah that he should be your king is the angels will get that tomb that was taken from you that has remnants of what uh, prophet moses and prophet aaron has left they will get that from your enemy they will it will come floating and it will be put outside Talut's house outside Saul's house as a sign from Allah that yes I am appointing him because they did not believe their prophet and that that's you know that's a different story so that miracle happened and the box and the tomb appeared outside his his uh, his house but they still turned away so the few of the few turned away so the, uh, you know, they, because miracles have no effect on people who are mentally weak and uncommitted. It, it doesn't do anything, you know, for them. So they went from 800,000 to 80,000. Now the ones who accept his leadership, now they were 8,000, a few of the few of the few. So 8,000 remained that Talut, you know, Saul will, would train to be the army. So this test filtered the selfish and the uncommitted. Now the third test came to filter out the ones who are weak-willed. They don't, they're not tenacious. They don't have a strong will. You know, the second some problem happens, they drop off. They, they cannot, they don't have the patience and the perseverance. So Talut organized the army and he tested his soldiers. He said, we are going to cross a river and whoever drinks from it is not from me you're not allowed to drink from that river so they were you know thirsty and now you're having nice sweet cold water that you're crossing and you just want to just jump in it and drink until you know it comes out of your ears 
So he said, if you drink from it, you are not, you are not from me. And if you don't eat from it, now no, notice that the term, don't eat from it, then you are from me and you're only allowed to take one cup with your hand and drink. That's all you're allowed to have out of that river. Now, now the Quran is very eloquent in portraying the mental state of the uncommitted people. He said, women lam yat'amhu, and whoever doesn't eat from it. Now, you don't eat water. You don't eat from a river. But what some of these people were doing, they took that law and said, okay, I'm not going to drink from it, but I'm going to grab the bread. I'm going to dip the bread in the water and I'm going to eat the bread. So technically, I'm not drinking, but yet I'm drinking through eating the bread. And that's what people don't, that don't have a strong will, they will find ways to, to go around the rules. You'll never have victory and you'll never have success with people who want to take shortcuts like that. So the weak ones could not resist you know, the, the look of the, the water and they just drank and drank. And the numbers dropped from 8,000 to a few of the few of the few. So now 800 remained. So that the, th the three tests took him from 800,000 down to 800. Now the fourth test, time for battle. So now the battle, it's going to filter out the undisciplined and the cowards. You know, the, the people who are not brave, who are not committed, who are not strong. And when Allah says in verse 250, وَلَمَّا بَرَزُوا لِجَالُوتَ وَجُنُودِهِ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا وَثَبِّتْ أَخْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ So, after they crossed the river, they, the, the prior verse, they, you know, some of them said, uh, we cannot fight this army. I mean, they're pretty strong and, and we're, you know, we're not, you know, we're going to get slaughtered. So they fell back. So they only 313 out of the 800,000 that of Bani Israel, 313 were the only ones left to fight this battle with this formidable army. And we know the number because there's a hadith that's, uh, that uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said their number were the same, uh, their number were the same number as the, the uh, believers on Badr and the battle of Badr and they were 313. So the number is, is not, is not, um, important per se but to see how how i mean look at the mental state of those remaining committed people that were determined to do what allah ordered them and they wanted to go and fight for for, for the sake of allah now they saw the army disappearing from behind you know from around them you know people falling back falling back falling back and now you know you had a you had 80,000 people going, you know, 8,000 people going to battle. And now all of a sudden you look around and there's all 313. That's demoralizing. But that did not affect those people because they were, they were strong and they were committed. And sometimes you see people around you that you thought you looked up to and they fall. I mean, they're human, they fall. And you never expected them to. But what you're supposed to do is you stay the course. No matter who around you falters, if you are a man of principle or a woman of principle, you stay the course no matter what, and you ask Allah to give you patience and to give you help. And that's where uh, the verse 250, when they appeared, when the armies were, were facing each other, the 313 who are left, they said, Rabbana أَفْرْغْ alayna sabran." Pour your mercy on us, your patience on us, as if it's like it's it's being dumped from a bucket. It's not enough just to have a little bit of little bit of patience. We need a lot of patience because when you have a small group facing a huge army, it, in in human terms, it is it's a done deal. They're 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 done for. But but these people had the criteria of success. They had all the factors of success. And they were committed and Allah was with them. And Allah says in verse 251, And and they defeated them. So the believers defeated the formidable army of Goliath. And Fa 
you know, in the, when the letter fa is there, it means speed and time. Wahazamuhum is it took a long time, but Allah says fahazamuhum. The battle was decisive and it did not take long. It was quick. It was it was a manifest victory quickly. And David, he killed Goliath. It wasn't Saul who killed Goliath, it was David. And David at the time, now is the first time that his name appear in the story. David was a young boy. He was a young shepherd who, when he heard the call to go and fight for Allah, he enlisted. With all these tests that the armies had to go through, he passed every single test. And he was just a little, he was a boy. He, he was not even a, a man yet. And he was the one who killed Goliath. And that is an indication of how important the youth is for the advancement of, of the Ummah. So they can make a difference. You know, you cannot say I'm only one person or I'm only young, a young person. Everyone can have, can make a difference. And Allah awarded, you know, awarded his commitment with, king, with kingship and prophethood. He made him a prophet and a king and he gave him a dominion that did not give you know, any, anyone else, him and his son Sulaiman alayhi salatu wassalam wa ala nabiyyina salatu wassalam so he gave them kingship that was unparalleled in human history because they had all the criteria of success. They were brave, they were tenacious, they, they had all of the criteria. So the lesson from, from the story, which is not a, a, a history lesson, it is, it is a lesson to learn of if we want to be successful, here's what we have to do. It's not about the numbers. The select few that are that have the successful fact the success factors are the ones who matter so change in human history comes from the actions of individuals who possess these traits who are brave who are disciplined who are strong-willed who are selfless they work for others they they are not interested in, in enriching themselves and they are committed they stay the course they do not fall back no matter what and prophets were, were such people. They were very committed people that made big changes in human history. And at the national level, when you have a critical group that have these success, that have these traits, then success for the ummah is possible. Leaders, inventors, scientists are all examples of such people who have these traits of success. And, you know, because changing personality traits it's not, you're not born with it. You, you develop it through, through training, through hard work, through effort. You know, it is in our power and in everyone's power to achieve. You, it is in your hand to be brave. It is in your hand to be committed. It is in your hand to be tenacious. And that comes, that comes from a faith in Allah and, and, and a connection to Him. Because that's where you're going to get all these success factors from. You know, you have, you have people who will only do good if they are recognized. If they get recognition, they do it. If they don't get any recognition and it's anonymous, they don't do it. Those are not going to be successful. There are people who stop doing, you know, they're doing good, but the second there's a problem, they stop. That, those are not successful. They don't have those traits of success. There are people who do good work, but the second somebody else has appointed the leadership above them, then they stop. Like, if I cannot be in the leadership, I'm not doing any work. Those, those people are not going to be successful. One example from our history is Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid. He was, he was an, a military leader that was never defeated in battle. And on the eve of one of the biggest battles, Ma'arakat al-Yarmouk in, in Syria, the, the letter came from Sayyidina Omar, who was the Khalifa, Taking him from, you know, taking the leadership from him and giving it to Abu Abaida, Abu Abaida ibn Jarrah Now, if you know that could have been a problem, that could have been a disaster. That the army could have split, they could have been defeated. But Khalid bin Walid was committed. He was, he was committed and was doing it for Allah, not for Umar. And as he was, you know, he he revealed later, you know, he obeyed. He just folded the. The letter and he says, Sam'an wa ta'an, I hear and I obey. And 
gave the leadership just like that gave the leadership to to uh, Sayyidina Abu Ubaida and le and he worked harder as a soldier than when he was in leadership and later on when he was asked you know how come you worked harder as uh, as a soldier uh, you know how are you how, how come you're working harder now as a soldier he said i'm not fighting for omar I'm fighting for Allah. I'm fighting to, op to to liberate the sham in the name of Allah. He was committed and he knew he was doing it for the sake of Allah, not to get notoriety, not to get, you know, monetary, uh, you know, benefit from it or or anything else or leadership. He was doing what he was supposed to do and he was committed. He was brave. He had all of these traits of success. So, you know, we should reflect and ask ourselves do we have any of these traits? Do we have them all? Are we trying to instill them in our children? So in case if we could not, you know, raise our ummah, maybe they can. And we should ask ourselves honestly and honestly and, and sincerely. I mean, this is between you and yourself. Nobody can, can, you know, do it for you. you. Ask yourself, am I brave? Do I take the initiative? To do the right thing or do I wait to be led by others do I let others take the initiative and I just kind of follow along that's not you know we need people who take the initiative and who are brave and and will will embark on things that you know that requires a lot of courage you should ask yourself am I selfless do I work for others do I want to benefit others or am I only in it for myself and if I don't get recognized, I will not do it. You know, we, ha we have to do good for goodness sake, for Allah's sake. You know, not to get recognition. You know, we do it for the reward that Allah has for us. And the third one is, am I strong-willed? Will I follow through with, with the, the tough task? Or will I stop at the first sign of problems? When somebody, you know, yells at you or, you know, give you a negative comment or, or criticizes, you know, this, that or the other, will you stop or would you continue? You know, would you, are you tenacious? Are you strong willed that you are folk, you are laser focused on, on the target and you will not waver? And the last one, and perhaps it's, it's the most important is ask yourself, am I disciplined? Do I, am I disciplined in life and at work? And uh, am I punctual? You know, these are very critical traits, you know, for success. Because if you're unorganized, tardy, or unreliable, you'll never be successful. And, and the non-believers took some of these and implemented some of them, and they were successful. You know, they were tenacious, they were, they were brave, they were strong-willed, they were disciplined. And there's nothing preventing us, you know, from achieving the same thing. And our, our faith orders it. So if we have these qualities, then Allah ta'ala may establish us on this earth again and give, and give Muslims the, you know, the, the upper hand to lead, to lead this world to, you know, in the way that he wants it to be led. But if we don't have these traits of success, then we will remain on the state that we are in until Allah Taala replaces us with somebody else who will. So we better think think about it. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.